Okay, we're going. And now I'll pull up my COVID slides and off we go. So I hope uh, you're seeing uh, calling the shots. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So, you know, we uh, talked about, we did our first talk on COVID um, back in November, Linda. And uh, at, at that point, uh, there was this interesting graph of uh, the countries and all the scrambling that they did to pre-order vaccines. And uh, can uh, Canada turned out to be uh, uh, the winner. They had, they got, they pre-ordered more vaccines. In fact, nine vaccines for every citizen. Uh, and, uh, and then you go across and of course, it's, it's mostly the rich world at, at the very top. Um, and um, I wanna point out COVAX, COVAX. We in, I introduced this uh, organization back then and we could see they were lagging behind. So what's, uh, what's COVAX? COVAX is uh, an organization sponsored by uh, the Global uh, Vaccine Initiative, uh, which was started in 1990, uh, World Health Organization, and an organization that started in 2015 called CEPI. And what's CEPI? The Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations. You've never heard of CEPI, but CEPI explored messenger RNA, the, the huge leap forward in this vaccine period. Uh, back in 2015, they, they said, hey, look, if we're going to uh, prepare uh, for uh, uh, and innovate for a pandemic, um, everybody should realize that messenger RNA has great, great, great promise. Uh, it had already been used a little bit to treat cancer, to carry genes around and, uh, to fight uh, cancer. So it was doable. And CEPI contacted the pharmacy. Big Pharma, wake up. You guys got to uh, look into this because a pandemic's coming and somebody's got to be organized. Well, fortunately, um, uh, Pfizer paid attention. And there was this new upstart company, Moderna, uh, that, that uh, uh, their whole business plan was to leverage messenger RNA. So they were already aboard. So CEPI created COVAX with the World Health Organization and Gavi. And then um, nations got involved. So like the United States, they uh, uh, started communicating with uh, Big Pharma. Hey, we're interested in what, you, what you're doing. Britain in particular um, gave AstraZeneca uh, a lot of money. It said, hey, we're, we'll, we'll support you, whatever you do in this new technology and, and uh, through Oxford, right? So you get the Oxford Ast AstraZeneca uh, vaccine that we're talking about. And some nations gave COVAX money, donations, the European Union, Britain, uh, but did the United Nations, uh, I'm sorry, did the United States? No, because Donald Trump uh, uh, was for America first and he'd be damned if he was going to give any money to an a international um, initiative. Uh, so uh, uh, the United States was out. But the United States did develop these uh, advanced um, market contracts where, and you'll remember, uh, we, we looked at this uh, uh, very interesting diagram from The Economist. You, I, 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 Linda, I use a lot of Economist stuff because I just think they're, they're brilliant in, in the way that, with their images. But they looked at the relationship between the vaccine developers and the countries. And so who developed these advanced market contracts way, way in advance before they knew what, that, whether anything would work at all? So let's just focus on our country, the United, United States. They made bets, right? You, you say, hey, if you develop something really big, uh, we'll, we're in, we'll buy a lot of money. It's interesting. 
that the United States, one of the biggest bets they made was with AstraZeneca. So they went with, with, with the British and that turned out to be, be a, a smart bet. They also uh, uh, made a, a smaller uh, bet uh, on uh, Pfizer, um, uh, which obviously was a smart bet. And this Novavax, I'm gonna talk about that today. That's, that's kind of new on the horizon. They made a, a, a bet on, on uh, Novavax. What's missing uh, on this is, is, is Moderna. I'm not sure why it's uh, missing. COVAX at that point, you could see made a big bet on AstraZeneca, uh, uh, but it turns out they've also made a bet on uh, a Novavax. And I'll, I'll talk about that in, right now. So this is updated. Th this is a different way of, of, of looking at the same thing. So you're looking at countries and you're looking who they have agreements uh, with. And let's start with our country. Um, uh, as I said before, uh, the biggest bet was with uh, AstraZeneca. Uh, Moderna is, is out here. Moderna is uh, an American uh, 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 company, um, uh, very uh, different than, than Pfizer. Um, very, very kind of uh, brash and entrepreneurial, um, and um, uh, uh, th that suited Trump just fine. And so he made a bet with them too. It was the same technology um, as, as Pfizer, messenger RNA. So, so uh, uh, wh why not? Um, and then uh, they also had this advanced uh, market contract with Pfizer. Now. Um, uh, let's look at COVAX. So now COVAX being a little bit better funded and the United States under Biden is, is uh, uh, donating. Um, uh, China is, is a big backer of uh, COVAX and they went really big with AstraZeneca because um, uh, AstraZeneca doesn't require as much uh, refrigeration, um, uh, freezing. So that's good for underdeveloped countries. That's what COVAX is designed for. Um, and uh, the other uh, bet that they made was with this Novavax that I'm gonna uh, talk about uh, a little bit later. And they're, they're in big time uh, with uh, uh, Johnson and, and Johnson. Um, they, uh, a little bit less with Pfizer because it's kind of, it's kind of uh, uh, pricey. Um, uh, before oh, we unstable. leave, go ahead. No, it's okay. It's unstable. That's the other big thing. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. Refrigeration. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That that's that's the big negative. Uh, uh, exactly. Yeah. But but it turns out it doesn't have to be minus seventy anymore. <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be minus ninety five. I the latest I've heard was minus seventy, and and uh, and then refrigeration stability for a while. But yeah. yeah, they're they're doing better, but still not good enough to go to Bush country. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. So uh, China, I just want to say a, a word about China is interesting. They, they went with AstraZeneca, uh, 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 but basically they haven't really been doing much. They've got, I mean, they're doing a lot. They're trying, but they're doing it the, the um, old fashioned way with an inactivated um, uh, virus. They've got a smaller um, uh, uh, thing with, with Pfizer. So you, maybe this, <laughs> this is for the elite, who knows? Um, but th they don't have much else going on with the rest of the world. I think they're waiting to see if the old fashioned way of doing things is, is, is gonna make it. Uh, so it, it, it's kind of a, a, a contrast. Right now, they're saying, hey, we can do mitigation. So we're not in any hurry to, to vaccinate. Um, we'll just wait until the cheapest, most obvious thing develops over time, and we'll 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 go with that. For, uh, we've got 1.5 billion people to, uh, to account for. So, so what uh, is the cheapest right now? 
I, I think uh, AstraZeneca, but uh, Novavax is going to come in cheaper. And I think Johnson & Johnson uh, will come in cheaper too. So um, I, I just want to remind you, um, Operation Warp Speed is um, only loosely related to the previous graphs. Operation Warp Speed was giving money. So it wasn't necessarily uh, always associated with an advanced um, uh, market contract. Uh, they would actually give grants, which they, they, they gave um, uh, to Moderna, but notably absent from giving grants um, was Pfizer. So that you had this big uh, uh, fufa uh, when um, uh, Trump said Pfizer, oh, they're the first one, they're part of warp speed. <laughs> and Pfizer never taken any money. They had an advanced contract that if, if, they, if they hit, they, 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 would, they would sell us, but they never took money. So Pfizer said, no, 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 we're not part of uh, Operation Warp Speed. And then Trump said, yes, you are, because you've got an ad advanced market contract, a, a bunch of hoodoo about nothing. But notice, um, uh, uh, just by, by the numbers, um, uh, they made a bet with Sanofi GlaxoSmith, and that came up bust. Uh, they, they, they dropped out. But Nova, Novavax uh, is, is still uh, going, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, so that was the one, the biggest remaining bet. But Astra's, uh, they hit big on AstraZeneca, and obviously they hit big um, on Moderna. And look, it looks like they'll hit on, on, on Johnson & Johnson, but not, not, uh, not Merck. Um, so what is this new Novavax? So... We've already talked about messenger RNA in um, uh, the, the Moderna uh, and the Pfizer. And that's when you take the um, uh, damn COVID genome and you figure out which part of the uh, uh, genetic message is uh, uh, instructions for making the spike protein. And you snip out that little part of, of, of the message uh, in, in the RNA, and um, you, you, you package all these little bits of RNA into these fat globules, which need to be kept very cold. That's, that's why the, uh, the uh, nucleic acid vaccines need to be kept cold. And, and you uh, inject the, these fat, little tiny, tiny nano fat particles as part of the vaccine, which re, uh, uh, get absorbed by a cell and then release the message, which goes to the protein factory inside the cell. And the protein factory uh, starts producing the spike uh, a protein and um, uh, spreads it through, throughout, uh, hopefully, most of the body, but focused where the, the uh, uh, immunization was, and that you, you evoke the immune system. Um, the other way of doing it, um, it is instead of packaging all these little messages in the fat globules, which is, uh, requires the cold uh, temperature, um, you can put it inside um, a uh, innocent adenovirus, not that it affects, infects humans, but it infect, infects chimpanzees. And, and you put it inside that, that virus, you make it so that virus uh, can't replicate, um, but uh, uh, you inject it and that, that virus does get taken up by, by the cell. It doesn't replicate in the cell, but it releases the, um, the, the, the little snippet with the instructions for the spike uh, protein. And that's uh, AstraZeneca, uh, Johnson & Johnson, and Sputnik. Um, uh, now, Novavax is the subunit vaccine. We didn't have an example of that uh, when I first showed this uh, slide, but Nova, Novavax uh, uh, makes this subunit. 
Um, and what they do is uh, they, they take the snippet instructions for um, the spike protein and they put it in a insect virus. Um, and they engineer insulin and they change that insect virus uh, to a modified virus with the spike protein. And then they take this modified virus and put it in a, uh, uh, a, a host cell and it's the army worm insect that is susceptible but they don't put it into a full-blown army worm. What they do is they take cells from the army worm and generate the cells from the army worm separately and infect those individual cells. And those individual cells crank out then tons and tons of a, 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 a spike protein which they uh, then um, uh, magically stabilize uh, uh, into a, a, a larger um, uh, uh, immunization and a larger uh, vaccine. That vaccine, it's the spike protein that they're actually injecting now. So the spike protein gets in, injected um, and uh, induces these little uh, uh, pink <laughs> antibodies uh, that, that uh, will protect and be ready in case a real uh, COVID uh, virus uh, comes along. So that's how the subunit works. Now I want to talk- Oh, I have a question. Which vaccines are of that type? Uh, I, uh, I've got a, a, um, a chart later on. I think Novavax is, is the main one. It's the only one you have to know about. But uh, I'll, I'll check that when I, when I show the table in just a, a minute. Um, now I want to look at about how the world is doing um, with uh, uh, vaccinations. This is a, 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 an economist map, God bless them. And what they do is they change the size of the country to be proportional to the population of that country, okay? So the best example here is you see the United States and then Canada, which is not very densely populated at all, <laughs> is, this, is this little sliver. But look, it's a very well immunized <laughs> sliver uh, because it, it did all that pre-ordering as did. So um, th the color coding is if a country has arranged a lot of a vaccine and have a have, uh, covered their population, they, the, 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 the better they've done, the darker the blue. So uh, unsurprisingly from that earlier chart, Canada is, is fine. So, so is uh, Britain. Um, and it, it, isn't it interesting that the EU uh, was uh, uh, better in fact than the, than the United States in terms of, of uh, corrected for, for population. It's, it's, it's a darker, uh, a, a darker blue. Um, but let, let's, let, it's kind of a big map. Let's break it down a, a little bit. So um, uh, China, uh, as I said, is kind of sleepy on this. They're in, they're in the red uh, and, and not just slightly in the red, they're well in the red. As is, as is uh, India, probably uh, less by choice. Um, and, and then the, the countries that are really hurting like uh, uh, Pakistan and Kazakhstan, um, uh, particularly Kazakhstan are, 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 are deeper uh, red. Unsurprisingly, Japan, Japan is fine. Um, Korea is okay. And Australia is, is poor, tiny, tiny little Australia is, is really in the, the blue. Um, Brazil's not bad. That kind of surprised me. Peru is, is well uh, positioned. If Juan Jose were here, he told, he told us that Colombia doesn't have hardly anything. Well, they're not deep red. Um, uh, Mexico it could certainly uh, uh, be, be better. Um, and um, just focusing on Europe and in the Middle East, we see the Middle East is in, in, in bad shape, 
particularly uh, Iran uh, and, and uh, Iraq, um, but, but uh, not Israel. <laughs> uh, and we'll come to Israel in just a second. Egypt's not bad. That's interesting. Uh, and here's uh, uh, Russia. Russia looms so large in our mind because they, they have such an active um, uh, foreign policy and military policy, but they are, uh, uh, they're not a dense country at, at all. And so when you, when you represent them uh, proportionally, yeah, they're bigger than the individual European countries, but all the EU together is, is much, much bigger than Russia. Russia is the um, 11th uh, economy in the world. Uh, and, and for a country that big, it should be higher, obviously, uh, than, than 11. Um, unsurprisingly, if you uh, look at how these countries are doing, using the same color coding, and you look at the human development index, the more developed a country is, the higher they're going to be in their uh, coverage of um, uh, with vaccine, um, and uh, unfortunately, Covax is is kind of in charge of of, of this part um, of, of the curve, the the pink and, and red part of uh, the curve. Um, th just this week, we learned uh, we didn't know whether the vaccine. Uh, would um, actually reduce transmission. It could have been that the vaccine would prevent disease, but it wouldn't stop carriage, which meant that you, somebody could, would not get the disease but could still carry it around. It looks this week that it's, this is finally going to be the case that, that uh, once we, the uh, uh, immunization kicks in, transmission will, will go down and everything uh, will, will go down. Except uh, for asymptomatic. That's what's disturbing in that last graph, John. Yeah, yeah. It, there's not much diminishment of asymptomatic transfer, which could be- Can you go back? Yeah, yeah the, I, I mean, I'm concerned about Burl vulnerable populations and oh yeah way. boy that's really well, still up there okay well i i've got a few more slides uh to, to show you that'll that'll okay reflect, great thank re you reflect this uh, uh, a, a little bit more uh, but yeah no it, 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 it but 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 the, the one the slide that i took out <laughs> goes straight uh, goes straight across showing yeah uh it, it, if there were still transmission there would be a shuffling of these bo colored boxes, but the, the the total level of the box wouldn't diminish at all. Yes. So, so we're we're, we're, uh, uh, not, we're doing I, a lot I, better. Maybe I should have left that in for emphasis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's look at the most successful country so far, Israel. So. The, the, uh, they have uh, the, they're way ahead in the percent of the population that has um, been immunized and uh, uh, quite hefty um, uh, age 60 and plus uh, uh, quite a few have had two two doses uh, less with the age zero to 59 and so this will be kind of a control group for us to look at so what's the outcome so Wait, did, did that include Palestinians or not? No, this was, and, and they just started distributing to Palestinians and shame on them. <laughs> um, so the, uh, this has had a big effect. This is their gift to the world. They are providing us with the information that, whoa, yeah, you, the, the people that are, uh, have a higher percent of uh, immunizations uh, have a, a, a lower rate of new positive cases. The population with a le that's immunized to a lesser degree continues to have uh, a, a high rate of new positive cases using the seven-day average. And the same ditto is new hospitalizations. Uh, it, uh, 
the 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 immunization started kicking in somewhere uh, around here, right? It takes a, a, a at least a, a week to have any, and and uh, probably a month to have a maximum, and then you get your second immunization, and uh, you go from eighty to ninety percent uh, then. So we see new hospitalizations suddenly uh, went down. So the, the, there's real world evidence that, that you know, outside of uh, uh, a study that uh, public health, uh, you can have uh, an impact. And th this just uh, reaffirms the dose per 100 people. That's what I'm looking at. Um, and uh, 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 Israel is uh, w way, way ahead. Um, uh, in terms of advanced countries, UK, uh, it, but it, isn't it interesting that, that they have uh, uh, really uh, one third the rate of, of Israel and the United States, uh, uh, for all that we've heard uh, about how poorly the United States has, has done, uh, uh, yeah, we're behind the, the, the UK and, and Israel, but uh, we're, we're pretty much ahead of uh, a lot of other places. Um, and uh, this is um, just from this week, um, this, the sudden success uh, that we're having. And this graph is why I decided we should talk about this today. Because right now we're really living in, in a historic time. We're not out of the woods. Um, and, you know, this could bounce back up. I'm, uh, I'm not uh, denying that, but things are, are, are looking pretty, pretty good for deaths um, and uh, new cases and hospitalizations. Um, and the percent uh, 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 testing positive, less important, but also uh, going down. And so, um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, we, we did well developing uh, the vaccine, ordering the vaccine, but we didn't do well in, in, in delivering it in the, er, in the first month. And that's because uh, um, our administration was focused on stop the steal, for Christ's sakes. But, but uh, uh, finally, things, uh, even before inauguration, started picking up. So to be fair, it was about a million a, a day uh, at the time of, of, of the inauguration, but it continues uh, to go up through last, last week. And if you, look, if you project out, um, uh, you've, you can see we, by summer, we're gonna have uh, Everybody who, who wants a vaccine is going to be able uh, uh, to get it uh, uh, by summer. We're, we're, uh, and this is just considering Pfizer, Moderna, and, and Johnson and, and Johnson. Um, AstraZeneca, uh, there's, uh, it, it's not quite as good using the uh, vector in that virus, that whole process. And, and the other problem with that uh, it is if you have to adjust the protein, um, the spike protein, it'll take longer uh, with the vector uh, viruses uh, delivery system than, than with just the pure R RNA. And I'll show slides of that in just a second. But AstraZeneca is, is going to probably be approved. It's been a approved obviously in Britain, and that's what they're using in, in the World Health Organization. It slowed down in America for a kind of strange reasons. They're waiting for the American uh, uh, limb of, of the study to come through. And why that's important, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, uh, maybe Irene from her uh, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that point, John. Could you say that again? So, it, 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 and, and the reason it's it's kind of um, uh, uh, unclear to me is that, that nobody knows for sure why the RFDA is not moving on AstraZeneca 
uh, and it may be that, okay, look, we've got enough coming on with Nova, uh, Novavax and enough coming on with J&J. &J. We're not in any hurry. Let's wait for AstraZeneca to fi finish their, uh, the um, uh, American part of their trial. They're, they have a whole different wing of the trial. And to, uh, to be fair, AstraZeneca kind of screwed up in the beginning. They, yeah. they only gave half a dose, <laughs> uh, but for some weird reason, the half a dose, people receiving only a half a dose did better and everybody scratched their head. But um, I think that's, that's probably what the reason that, that it's been slowed down. But you, you remember that, that Trump made a big bet with AstraZeneca. So this yeah. is even without AstraZeneca uh, and, and it's uh, without the, uh, the, the Novavax, right? So we're, we're, we're in good shape, basically. Um, everybody that's going to want one is going to get it. But look, uh, there's been some retrograde feeling um, around the world about people who are willing to receive um, a, vac a vaccine. You know, the, the vaccine deniers have had their impact and conspiracy theories. And but interesting, it's gone down in China. Of course, the, the most successful uh, country uh, after Israel's Britain and, 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 and trust has gone way up. Of course, they love their National Health Service, right, to the extent that they'll put it in the opening ceremonies of the Olympics, for Christ's sake. Um, Russia, it's, it, it's gone up. United States, the uh, uh, trust uh, has gone down a little bit. Um, but uh, the uh, interesting thing is when the first round of people to get it, namely healthcare workers, even some of them had some vaccine uh, hesitancy. Uh, but once uh, the, the Pfizer uh, emergency use was authorized and the vaccine started, the hesitancy all of a sudden uh, dropped. So I think, uh, I think we're going <clears> to, <throat> I don't think that's going to be a problem. That's my prediction. So I looked at, at um, a grading, you know, because everybody's talking, well, the United States, we really, we really screwed up. And then other people are saying, no, no, the United States is doing fine. So I think it's very useful to break down uh, our pandemic response into three phases. Um, and one is the, the, the mitigation. What did we do at the beginning when we found out um, that we had a, a, a pandemic? And then how well did we set up uh, uh, the vaccine? Not deliver it, but set it up and, and be ready and encourage it to be developed. And then how well did we uh, uh, get the vaccine in, into the uh, uh, population? And then how well have we done once we realized that, that we weren't getting it into the uh, population? And then the last thing is, what was our response to COVAX? So United States, um, I, we got a D. But uh, you know, reading some articles about that, we ne the United States never does well right out of the box. It, <laughs> it, it takes us a while to get organized. We could see that in at Pearl Harbor, you know, and we were we were we were backpedaling for six months before we we got up to speed in in World War uh, II. The same was true for Sputnik, but we in both cases we did respond. We did respond eventually, and um, once we. Oh, did, John, I have a question. When you say about um, uh, Pearl Harbor, do you mean the six months? after Pearl Harbor was bombed or before it was bombed? Well, the, uh, the, 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 uh, six months before and after, how about that? Okay. Uh, six months before and three months after, uh, okay. uh, I, I would say we, 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 were, we were kind of disorganized, but we got organized pretty quick. And if you wanna see an inspirational movie on that, uh, watch the, the most recent um, uh, uh, take on Midway. Uh, very well done with Woody Harrelson playing Nimitz. <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, it's a good movie. Um, Is that uh, called Midway? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, and so um, 
uh, we did well on the. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give America a, 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 an A on Operation uh, uh, Warp Speed. Uh, uh, obviously, there were some uh, uh, little picadillos in the middle of that and the kick up with Pfizer and whether they were part of it. But in general, they made they made good they made good bets and they put up um, a, a lot of the seed money. Um, and then uh, they kind of dropped the ball and getting the jab in the arm and in in December and January after the election, everything was um uh, uh stop the steal you know and that that whole travesty but now we're kind of responding uh so i, I uh, uh with the new administration and and uh, and and the covax we didn't join uh but now we're in covax realizing that the world's got to get immunized otherwise if if this thing perks along globally you're go you're going to get um a, a more uh, mutations, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, England similarly had a bad uh, early phase, but they got things set up pretty quick and were prepared with uh, Oxford, Ast AstraZeneca, and because they have an organized health system, they got uh, they could uh, get, uh, mobilize and 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 get the people immunize both, both sides. They could offer it and people would, would go out of their way to get it. Israel, similarly, bad start, but A, A. Uh, the EU is an interesting case. They, Germany did okay, France didn't, Spain did had an F, but overall okay to C. But their vaccine setup is terrible and it remains terrible. They're quibbling among themselves. They can't agree on who, who gets the uh, uh, contracts. It's a disaster. China, uh, great on mitigation. Their vaccine, they're, they're kind of dawdling and they're, not, they're hardly delivering any. Uh, so, you, you know, when you, you say America really screwed up, I think you've got to be specific and talk about uh, what, what stage. And that China did great, okay, but what stage are you talking about? Russia, uh, mitigation D, and just cons D for denial, but they've got a, um, uh, uh, a uh, uh, vector um, uh, uh, delivery system for, and, and, and they came out with initial reports, say, hey, we got 90%. They were the first to come out. And I, it wasn't a, a, a real trial they were talking about. They uh, probably measured antibody. Uh, and they said, hey, we, we've got a success, 90%. It probably was 90% uh, percent, uh, antibody response, which is fine, but they didn't wait to see if there was gonna be any uh, side effects. The, uh, what you, you have to do with a study, uh, and, and traditionally it's been a year, uh, but I think uh, for, for a pandemic emergency use, you'd like at least a couple of months. Um, and, uh, and fortunately in this case, um, uh, a couple of months worth of, of data without there being any terrible side effect like Guillain-Barre uh, was enough. Um, and uh, so Russia, it turns out, uh, uh, gets an A, but now they they're not doing well with with delivering, which is kind of a kind of a puzzle. Japan's kind of a puzzle too, um, uh, but but uh, they've got a vaccine on on order, so maybe they they really should be a, a, a B. But they really haven't. For somebody that wants to host the Olympics, you'd think they they'd be a little bit uh, better. Now this is the table I was uh, uh, talking about. So the Novavax is is uh, making the the protein, and they also add a, what they call an adjuvant, something that that uh, 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 stimulates the immune system, that that, uh, that accompanies the protein and and says, hey, we got a new protein here, uh, uh, get with it, um, and so. Uh, uh, this this is is really the big uh, addition. I've, I've talked about uh, all the uh, others, um, and uh, this this is from a a, a really nice uh, uh, weekly digest, the Infectious uh, Disease Digest. Uh, 
I don't know if you know about that, uh, Irene, you might check that out. Yeah, I hadn't seen that, that's cool. Yeah, so this is just a way of looking at uh, uh, what are the excess deaths uh, that, okay, a country maybe doesn't have a good reporting system, but you can look at the annual mortality rate and, and compare with 2019, what how many, uh, what's the excess mort mortality? Even if uh, something's killing more people this year, even though they're, they're not reporting COVID. And a lot of that could be um, people not getting regular health care, right? Because of, of, of the pandemic. It could be suicides, you know, who knows? But there's a lot of uh, excess uh, mor mortality uh, in the world. And that'll be the, the really interesting statistic to look at ac around the world, because some countries just don't have a good reporting system um, of, of diseases. The, uh, but every country uh, kind of has some idea of how many people died. You know, it's binary. Either you're alive or you're dead. Uh, and so we'll have that statistic. In America, Huge difference between um, uh, the beginning of January and the middle of, of, of uh, February. A um, lot more, lot more pink, uh, less less black. Uh, but notice California is a, is is kind of still uh, an an outlier, and uh, we think a lot of that is. Um, uh, uh, Latinos living in, in close quarters, uh, in particular, uh, particularly in the in the valley and, and in LA, um, and, and uh, Texas has got the, the the same the same problem. Looks like Florida uh, does too, um, and so um, I, they have some excess mortality uh, uh, graphs and. I, I just pulled out, um, they had all the states, I just pulled out the one on California, which is kind of in the, in the middle of the pack. These all have, have more excess mortality uh, and, uh, as you go down the table. Um, me. You know, the last graph before this, uh, two before this, that one there, you know, February, um, where the middle part of the country is pretty light in comparison. Could it be that the vaccine is also having some effect because they're the ones that have gotten, you know, they're the ones that are, uh, have gotten it in arms more than anybody else. Yeah, it, yeah, I, I, I think I, I'm going to show you a table about that. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, this is another way of looking at the, the uh, COVID cases. Um, and uh, here uh, uh, is that promised uh, table. Uh, these are, uh, uh, the, this is organized by uh, the percent of the population that's had one dose. So Alaska uh, is, is a leader. We all heard about initially it was uh, West Virginia. Well, the, the, here, here they are. Uh, but certainly South Dakota, which is, uh, they, they, they uh, had an about face. Um, if you want a success story, Atul Gawande talks about this. Um, he visited uh, Minot, which was the worst city in South Dakota, and looked at it in detail and talked to the people and heard their stories, the people that were resisting masks. And uh, by the end of the story, uh, the people had changed their minds and realized that it was a disaster. So what, uh, 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 that turned into a success story. According to Atul Gawande, I think he, he's written it up. Uh, if you Google it, uh, Gawande and- It's in uh, the New Yorker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and so, I, I went down the list and I just wanted to uh, down to California to see where, where uh, we, fit, we fit in. We, we, I think maybe we're just barely in the top third, but, but we're not at the bottom. We're not at the bottom. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the deaths in the last 14 days, we are at the, at the bottom. Alabama leading, leading the list. 
This is corrected for population, deaths per, per uh, 100K. All the stuff the economist does is, is uh, broken down in, in, into uh, uh, apples and apples uh, uh, comparisons. Um, and so uh, California, in terms of uh, cases per, uh, uh, not deaths, but now cases, um, is, is better. At least we're, we're, we're not in, in the, the worst uh, uh, category and, and we're falling. Um, so in, in summary uh, of uh, this part of it, at least, Israel um, is uh, uh, leading the world in vaccination. Britain is, when you, I've eliminated the, the Seychelles and the UAE, these smaller uh, special cases, big countries, Israel, uh, Britain, and then uh, the United States, uh, European Union, China uh, uh, way behind. And this is not what everybody was predicting a year ago. Oh, China's doing so well with mitigation. They'll find the vaccine. They'll immunize their population. Watch them. No, not, 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 not true. Um, so uh, we're, we're on a roll. Um, and uh, this is a, a, a projection on how quickly um, things are going to improve. So by summer, we'll be giving 4.5 million shots a day. Um, and the success uh, uh, it, 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 that we're seeing is uh, for one article said, hey, it's four things. Um, uh, people are wearing masks and isolating the vaccines. Um, the, and by the way, we're going into, uh, we're coming out of winter, it's getting uh, warmer, and more people are, are immune. Either people who've uh, uh, had the virus or have had the, the shot. And why were we able uh, to do that? Why are, did we recover after such a dismal start? Well, regulatory approval in this country was, was quick. I thought it was kind of I thought the FDA could have gone quicker. Britain did. Brit Britain uh, um, uh, uh, had their regulatory agency evaluating data as it rolled in. FDA waited for a, a, a batch of data and then looked at that at that batch, and that put us a couple of weeks behind. But 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 you know, a couple of weeks is in, in the greater scheme of things. Well, in our manufacturing capability, the way we're going to gear up uh, for this, um, uh, people said, "Oh, America doesn't do manufacturing anymore." Well, America still does eighty-five percent of its own manufacturing, and another. 7% uh, of shared uh, manufacturing, like products made half here and half, say, in Mexico. Um, so we, we manufacture, and we uh, particularly sophisticated uh, things like uh, messenger RNA vaccine, we can do it. Um, uh, 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 distribution, we, we've got networks. Um, we, I've already talked about that. Uh, and uh, the government uh, uh, recognized the urgency. Uh, and one person uh, said the most important thing for Operation Warp Speed was that Trump uh, uh, was shut out. He was allowed to go and, and, and jabber. But the, there were people who made important decisions. Who, where, who are we going to bet? And they figured, uh, they figured out, they made uh, fairly good, good bets. But what's our infrastructure? We've got, still got a very active um, uh, uh, science funding agency. Should it be more? Yep, and Bill Gates, um, uh, his new book says, boy, oh boy, we need to uh, 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 quadruple that in the area of green technology. But we've got it. Um, and the biotech and, and uh, uh, pharma, and uh, also the, the, they could get uh, venture capital. We do have a, a, a venture capital that can mobilize surplus uh, to put money pretty quickly where, where it needs to go. Uh, and, and all this with uh, a uh, infrastructure, a deep state, if you will, the, of a, a pretty... Uh, uh, 
uh, uh, good uh, core of, of um, uh, government employees that we maybe take for granted that so they certainly don't have in a lot of countries. And we have a very uh, uh, solid volunteer uh, civic society, as, as de Tocqueville said. That's, that's the unique thing about America. So we've always had this strong civic sense as much as uh, we're polarized um, uh, on a national basis where, uh, uh, as Thomas uh, Friedman says, if, if you want to be optimistic, stand on your head. Stop looking at, at, at the federal government and look at your local government. Look at mayors. Uh, he, he wrote this book where he went back to Minnesota where he grew up and, and he could see how um, uh, the Jewish part of his society um, had uh, uh, the Jews had left, uh, but the Somalis had come in, and there were all these uh, community organizations to support uh, Somalis. So, uh, and we've got a congresswoman. Um, we still have a lot ahead. There's there's the mutations, um, and uh, I'll I'll finish this because I want to get to the an animation. There's. Uh, uh, but, but here's the thing, the, the mutations with the uh, messenger RNA, you, you, uh, uh, you just go in and you correct the genome and you stuff it into um, a uh, fat globules and uh, you take a, a, a four to six weeks and, and give it. And if the antibodies, then boom, you're off. You don't have to start all over again with messenger RNA uh, dealing with that. Um, so um, let's um, uh, go to animation. All right, we'll go to animation. Did so- you the screen, Jai? What's that? Did yeah. you share a screen? Yeah. Okay. So, whoops, I just did the wrong thing there. Sorry. So, I need to um, do this. All right. So, I'm not sure how I share my screen and do um, the. Okay, here we go. Share screen. That's what it is. My desktop. And click those two boxes in the lower left. Whoa, here. whoa, whoa, whoa. How do I undo that then? Uh, stop share. I'm going to stop share and go back oh, and click the box. I, I saw a graph on the screen. No, no, there. but we, uh, no, no, that's, that's, um, but Shares for the quality down. of the animation, she has to uh, check a couple of more screws. Uh, you boxes. know, and optimize it's, um, video clip is grayed out so let's just try it without that and see what happens all do right the, do the audio though oh okay oh i did the audio okay. yeah um okay it's giving oh i see what it's doing it's at sorry this is the first time i'm sharing audio okay great all right so can you guys see now what? I see COVID-19 vaccines. That's <laughs> it. Okay. So I'm just going to, and I'm not sure how to hide the rest of this garbage. Oh, I know how to do it. There it goes. Okay. So, um, all right. So I'm just going to go through a really speedy overview. And the whole purpose of this was that I was preparing a, slide, a set of slides for another purpose. Here, I want to just go through a blast of why it is not speedy um, discovery. The five days are the culmination of 40 years. So you don't need to read anything on my slides. I'm just giving you the big overview that the foundation stones for the mRNA vaccines go well before 1981. And there, there are pieces of it that are um, published at various points. So Carico, one of uh, John's uh, heroines, uh, you know, was, was a persistent researcher, but her first publications, University of Wisconsin, she's Hungarian, but she uh, worked at University of Wisconsin, and she's publishing already in the early 90s. So in the 1980s, she had to be working on this stuff. And um, 
so there were there were definitely problems, but she was persistent. So what are the modifications that help things go from kind of a dismal but glimmer of hope in the 1990s, uh, introducing nucleic acids that had been modified in such a way that the product, the mRNA that is produced in order to be used in these vaccine droplets, stabilized by putting pseudonucleic acids into it. Then there's the... Um, uh, the uh, discovery that if you use a sizing column on a, on a high performance liquid chromograph, you can get rid of uh, some of the byproducts of the in vitro transcription. That's what IBT stands for in vitro transcription that produces the mRNA. So you're improving the immune response. And I'll have a slide later on that shows a little bit of that. Um, then um, there are a lot of uh, improvements in the nanoparticles as carriers. And I'll just have a slide that shows you there's about a dozen of those uh, improvements. The big one that, the, um, that enables the animation that I'm gonna show you is that um, the electron microscopes that are able to do the kind of visualization that is, was critical to figuring out the spike protein. Those are, I'm put in uh, 2015 only because that is the critical publication that allowed everybody around the world to see exactly what to do if they were paying attention, if they wanted to use the spike protein as their mRNA. So in 2015, that's the respiratory syncytial virus, a very deadly um, respiratory infection in children, quite like 90% lethality. Um, and in that, um, in that publication, that is what uh, enabled our National Institutes of Health where that work was done to go back and rapidly figure out in five days what they wanted to put into the, the Moderna vaccine. So that's the next line is that from the 10th to the 15th of 2020, uh, they were working 24 seven. It so happened that um, the chief scientist who had been doing the cryo EM studies here, Jason McClellan happened to be in Barcelona. So they were literally shooting data back and forth 24 seven for five days to figure out exactly what they were gonna put into that Moderna vaccine. I think it's a really cool little snippet. All right, and then the very last thing is that um, nobody stops here. Uh, everybody, bes besides the um, multimillionaires and multi-billionaires that are being created by the sale of these vaccines, there's also um, a boom in a types of research that have been spawned by this uh, pandemic and vaccine uh, race. And one of those that I found particularly interesting is this last line that um, it was actually in the end of 2020 that it was published that uh, McClellan's group went back and did a systematic scan of every uh, mutation that could happen in spike um, and then tested every one of those to see how they could produce buckets of thermostable copies of spike. All right, so that, that's, that's the big heavy lift uh, slide. The rest of it's gonna be easy. Can I ask you just one question? Sure. Back, back to that slide. Um, you sure. said that, that the electron microscope was so important. So the thing is they knew, um, uh, just what the protein was uh, from analysis uh, since 2005, I guess, or even before, but they had to have the electron microscope to look at the spike protein. And see yeah, hey, yeah. The, cryo, the cryo EM is critical because, um, so you can, you can make theoretical assumptions about how, so proteins are incredibly, uh, fabulous in that they range from being very floppy molecules to be very stable molecules, depending on what they have to do. 
And if you have the sequence, that's a linear piece of information. The protein is a three-dimensional and actually a four-dimensional structure because it changes with time and it changes with circumstance. So unless you can verify with something that is telling you that the structure reflects what you think it's doing, you're really a little bit out in left field. Mm -hmm. And it was that um, uh, discovery with the respiratory syncytial virus, which is very closely related with the SARS-CoV-2, has the same, it's very similar homologous spread protein. That's what enabled uh, the very quick um, uh, transfer of information from the RSV spike to the corona spike. Did that do it? One more question. So sure. the ultra microscope in 2015, was there some tremendous improvement in them? Because I remember using electron microscope huh? back yeah. in college and, and was yeah. it you know, something really Amazing. Oh, always, 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 you know, um, uh, we can go offline and I can tell you about some amazing research that came out of uh, my lab, my the lab I was working with before we retired, that was only enabled by this young graduate student who had done some amazing work with um, stabilizations prior to electron microscopy. So anyway, they get, they get more and more powerful beyond what we were exposed to uh, during training and they get fancier and fancier. And of course, computerization of results and being able to get higher and higher resolution um, is the critical piece, right? And especially with a protein like spike, which is a metastable protein, it moves around a lot. We'll, we'll do the animation in a second. And you'll see, it's it's very fun. In fact, you know what? Um, I'm going to switch the animation right now because um, I just go through the slides real quick. Oh, okay. All right, great. I'll do that. All right. So all I want to show you here is that here's about a dozen different ways to deliver mRNA. Every one of these is uh, has different impacts on the immune system once it hits. Um, and the stabilization of the mRNA is only one piece of it. Another huge piece of it is the progress in understanding how these nanoparticles work to be able to be uh, stable enough to go into a shot, go into your arm and hit a target and then melt away and fuse with the cell, right? And so this is just a kind of a goofy slide to show you that on the left side, you have all of these reactions in the immune system that are potentially interfering with a stable set of memory cells and T cells. And on the right, how on the right, this is more what we are looking for um, in terms of, of uh, triggering the correct immune response that's protective without being uh, too many side effects. Um, this is uh, just to remind everybody, this is taken from a 2018 review. So it's pre-pandemic and it's uh, showing you that there are a lot of mRNAs in, as John mentioned, mRNA um, uh, vaccines that are in uh, uh, trial or in practice at this point, because this is from 2017. And um, I'm just highlighting in the upper right that for Ebola, Zika, HIV-1, and flu, all of those have been in trials for a while. Um, the Ebola was um, mobilized, but it didn't arrive soon enough to really have an impact in Western Africa and Ebola outbreaks, but I understand it's now in use in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Huh. Uh, um, yeah. And of course, flu is extremely tricky and HIV-1 is even more tricky. That's a whole story in itself. Um, so it, it, not to be uh, sidelined too far uh, and the Pfizer group, BioNTech, its focus was uh, cancer vaccines. They pivoted at the outbreak of the, of the pandemic to get into the race for a vaccine for the pandemic. But, um, there's a lot of hope of using mRNA vaccines for the treatment of cancer, as John mentioned. 
Okay, so this is where the, the um, oh, you wanted me to go through the slides first. I'm just gonna show you this and then we'll go back to the, the animation at the end, which is that if you look on the left-hand side, I have a, a red thing and it says, okay, here's the virus. And this is a, uh, a cartoon showing the various domains, the pieces of the spike protein, the trimer. And if you go online uh, to the images by Proteopedia, org on the bottom right, you can see this thing in action and it is the most amazing conformational change. This protein goes from being left oriented to being right oriented and much longer. And in the animation, you'll see that in action. Um, very amazing protein. <laughs> um, okay, so this has to do with um, this is a, a photograph from cell culture of lung cells, ciliated lung cells, and the virus that is produced by it. And what you can see, and there's some um, mucus that's produced by the lung cells that's kind of making a webbing. But the, you can see that the viral particles are kind of, there's hundreds and hundreds of them, which explains why you get so sick. But also that if you're going to try and... Um, purify those virus particles for whatever reason that you want to do, it's going to be really difficult. They're all stuck together. They're in different forms. Who knows what's going on? So that is why um, um, we, need to, we needed to have this uh, publication that is at the end of that first long headache slide um, that what you need in order to to go ahead with research is buckets of spike. If you're gonna do spike, there's a lot of other proteins you can focus on, but in the uh, SARS-CoV-2, but buckets of spike is what people want right now. And it needs to be thermostable, which spike is not. It's a metastable protein. It flops around a lot. Your, uh, whatever you've got, you have to have it easily produced and purified in large quantities if you'd wanna do biochemical studies. And it has to be confirmationally accurate. You, you know, if you're going to screw around with it, mutationally, you have to make sure that all of the antibodies that you get your hands on still have the same affinity for your variant form of spike. And then, of course, there's the very critical uh, question of predicting vaccine failures. You want to get ahead of the curve which of the potential variants that you can create in the laboratory might evade uh, the um, immunity that is stimulated either by a previous uh, exposure to COVID-19 or vaccination. So um, they're really a, a potent way of trying to get ahead of that curve. So um, this is just simply to show you what these guys are working with and they have the most amazing computer graphics. Um, so it, it, what's in the middle is the receptor binding domain and the part of spike which has to flip out in order to make an infection in a cell. And that, that's not something that you need to pay any attention to, but if you want to, there's the, the reference on the right and it's just, uh, an amazing piece of work. Okay, so that's it. That's, that's that paper and that's the end of the slides. And now I'm going to show you the fun stuff, which is the animation. And let's hope that I have it queued up. I'm gonna get rid of PowerPoint. You might have to stop share and go back in. It's actually right here. John. Okay, go for yeah. it. Yeah, let's see what I can do. I think I have it queued up properly. Yeah, I can see it. I can see clearly now. Don't you don't have to listen to me singing. All right. So You're, it would see. be fine to hear you sing. <laughs> I don't know about that, Linda. This group knows me better than you do. <laughs> okay. They know. Anyway, um, okay, it looks like I oh, I might be able to get it in full screen. Yes, yay. Okay, let me get this moved up. All right, so this is um, um, 
a professor at the University of, of, of Utah. And she uh, made this, oh, come off it. Get out of here. I, I don't know. I'm having trouble moving the, the um, let's see if this can get me there. No. OK, I'm going to go backwards then. I had it queued up. There it is. All right. Oh, isn't that a be a beautiful that? Okay, so so we're gonna go here. Um, okay, let's see. This is not the one that I wanted. I am so sorry, you guys. I seem to have lost it, and I don't know why. Um, Take your time. This is what I want. Why is it not running? That's what I want to know. Well, as Aiko tells me. There it is. There it is. Oh, Yay. Good. OK. I'm, I'm, oh, I can make it bigger. Yay. Come on. Let's go. Here we go. All right. So I'm going to run this. This is showing you. OK, there we go. There's our little virus and the various proteins and the spikes are the green. There's your RNA packed inside of that little virus ready to make a mess of you. And now this is the surface of the cell and the yellow are proteases and the gold are proteases. The purple is that ACE2 receptor. And here's the virus coming in at a closer view, grabbing a hold of the ACE2 receptors and the spike protein. She can't show you the wobble of the protein, but she's showing you the wobble of the surface. And here the receptors are lining up and the proteases are getting interested. They're coming over. And they, the little light means they are clipping pieces off of the spike protein so that it can do its dance. This is where your proteases are helping you get infected. And there they go. Isn't that amazing? Those are the proteins going down and sinking their teeth into the cell, which is at the bottom of the screen, and then doing this pulling it together so that those two lipid bilayers fuse the virus and there it is going into your cell. <laughs> and now you notice that the, um, the, sorry, let me back it up for one second. You'll notice that the cell surface is decorated with virus proteins. The, all of these, right, are, these are all virus derived proteins or so your immune system can see that there's something wrong with that cell. Uh, it can kill it if it's an infected cell uh, or a vaccine included cell, doesn't matter where these spike proteins come from, the immune system will see it. And here's your little ACE2 receptors having uh, done their job of welcoming in the virus in this case. So, wow. fun. Isn't that a fun video? That was great. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Wow, so, that actually, it makes me sick. You know, <laughs> that was great. Wow. You want to see it again? Oh, oh I, I, I can send you the link. You can play it 4,000 times. Well, okay. I, I, it, it's I'm, so astounding. All that stuff's going on in your body. I know. I was just going to say that. It's amazing what's going on in our bodies. They're, yeah. they're like little treacherous beings in there. Oh, well, there are beings that have evolved to take advantage of what we've got. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're smart little motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for the background of, with the electron microscope. But for me, the respiratory sensational uh, yes. virus as a model and, uh, and what and what was required uh, right. to do that. I've been talking about, you know, 2015 and uh, CEPI 
but you you gave us the uh, uh, the context of of what Bill Gates was so excited about. Yeah. Let me ask you one question. So yeah. Our proteases help the spike proteins to get in. Is there some way to keep the proteases from doing that? Well, that, that's a disadvantage not to have yeah. the proteases for other reasons. Oh, we have to have the proteases on the surface for, for other completely other reasons. Uh -huh. um, but the questions you're asking are excellent because they lead to the, the um, aspect of drug and therapeutic interventions that require having the reagents in a, a large enough volume to be able to do the biochemistry on them to see. So people have been blocking and enhancing proteases forever. They're really critical for, for a lot of med medical interventions. Um, whether or not this one can be specifically enough inhibited that it can't see the spike protein, that would be that would be a big ask if you ask me just off the top of my head because uh, whatever other purpose that protease is there for on the surface of lung cells, for instance, and there are a lot of other cells in the body that have ACE2 receptors, um, those functions are critical. And proteases in general are so fabulously specific in terms of grabbing their substrate and doing whatever they're going to do to change that protein. I just can't imagine quite how you would inhibit or block it only for the interaction with the virus. Whereas the spike is a whole other world because the spike is coming in on the, on the virus. So that's a much better target. Yeah. And other, other people are going after other targets that are on the virus besides spike, but spike is, spike is obviously everybody's favorite because it's the mechanism that gets it into the cell. So you say that the proteases are very specific, but are there proteases that then are only for the COVID spikes and other proteases that go after cancer cells or something else? Um, that's that protease. So I don't know very much about the particular protease that works on spike, um, what its other, uh, purposes are, what its other targets are, but I was, uh, speaking generally that proteases are incredibly specific and this, uh, coronavirus, um, has evolved to take advantage of the, of the one, two punch that our, uh, um, for instance, lung cells present to them that they can, that they are able to have a receptor binding domain that that uh, works like hand and glove with the the uh, spike protein to grab uh, from the lung cell to the virus, and this protease that modifies the spike protein so that it can do its business of infecting. It is it is stunning. It's really stunning biology. <laughs> yeah, and I like your metaphor of the, the protease being a fifth column welcoming committee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's just been really fun for me to, to read all this and, and uh, try and digest it into some form, but it's really fun, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for translating you very much. it into English. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And All right. just the right animation. I, I bet there's no better animation than that. I haven't found one. And I just love it that the, the woman who made it, uh, this um, professor of biochemistry in, in Utah, she has a passion for uh, visualizations and I haven't done a deep dive into her stuff, but apparently she has a lot of animations that she uses in her classes and things like that. And she collaborates with a, uh, a group in Mainz, Germany that uh, are structural biologists and they share her passion and they have huge computers too, because it takes a lot of computing 
to do this kind of stuff. So for sure. that's, that's why she labeled it her Christmas present to the scientific community, because it was a labor of love. So this, this animation did not have any narrative with it. Correct. Correct. So we, we uh, but here on this program that's being taped, we have, <laughs> we have the animation with your narrative. So True. I think this is going to go, can I say, viral? <laughs> <laughs> you have an infectious sense of humor, John. <laughs> I have a, a question for both of you. What, what's the difference between Moderna and Pfizer? I mean, what's... Oh, that's they, a fun one. Are they pretty much almost identical or... No, they're not totally identical. The basic idea is the same. So um, they have different nanoparticle coverings on them, but they both nanoparticle coverings stem from John's other girlfriend, Kariko. Uh, she is the beginning of both the founding of Moderna and Pfizer's um, uh, collaboration with BioNTech. They're both building off of Kariko's stuff. So, um, so that coding is possibly lots of similarities, but probably each company has found its own ways of getting more and more stable and more and more effective in eliciting the kind of immune response that they want. It has kind of an adjuvant effect, right? Things that are put in with a vaccine in order to stimulate the immune system. What is the same is the mutations that were introduced into the mRNA in order to stabilize the spike protein in the prefusion confirmation. So if we go back to the slide, um, if I can figure out, I will go back to the slide, but if you, in your mind, go back to the slide where I showed kind of that pop bead confirmation of the spike protein. On the left-hand side, it was all scrunched up on itself. And on the right-hand side, it was way extended, right? there are lots and lots of confirmations in between. It's a fluid movement from one to the other. You can't have that if you're gonna have an effective vaccine that can see the form that the spike protein is in when it is on the virus particle and it's held in, you know, somewhat stable on the virus particle. So that pre-fusion before you fuse with the target cell is the confirmation you want. And that's why it was so fabulous that McClellan and Graham at the NIH had solved the respiratory syncytial virus because the respiratory syncytial virus spike does the same dance. And they had figured out that if they introduce two substitution amino acids, prolines that, that would, I try and get this down to lay language, they had swapped out two of the pop beads in the uh, protein with proline so that it held it much more in the, in the pre-fusion form that's on the surface of the virus before it goes into its stance. So that is the same in the Pfizer and the Moderna. I don't think Pfizer has published exactly the sequence of its mRNA. I bet the one that was designed at the NIH is available. I haven't looked for it. Um, so I don't know whether the protein that's gonna be produced by your cells based on that mRNA is gonna be identical. That I don't know. Got it. But wow. they, they both have the stabilized protein form. Okay. All Pretty right. amazing. Thank God for science. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been paying for it as far as NIH is concerned. So. Yeah. And, and Kariko is going to get the Nobel Prize, slam, slam dunk. And uh, uh, Linda, I'll send you a picture uh, the, uh, uh, from our slideshow in November. Oh yeah, that's that's a good one. I like the that picture that you you got. Yeah, 
it's good. Yeah. I, it was so funny when I was reading the um, uh, Word documents that you sent me. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't I hadn't known that part of the story about uh, her husband was hung up in Hungary, couldn't get over here because of visa problems. And she's fighting for grants and getting told, no, 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 no. Everything's going wrong. And she's going, I'm in the wrong career. Let me out of here. Did she wow. take the, the, a demotion at the University of Pennsylvania? Oh, that, you know, that's typical. If you can't publish, if you can't get grants, you can't publish. And if you can't publish, you, can't get demo you won't get tenure. And so blah. But yeah, she did. She did well to go to a company that could support her. Yeah. 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 So the, the lesson is persevere and you'll get the Nobel Prize. Uh, yeah, be smart. You have to do that first. <laughs> right, right. You have to have a, a good brain. Yeah. <laughs> There's 10,000 failures for every success. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. That was that was that was great. That was a good uh, 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 conclusion. Wrapping things yeah. up and uh, uh, making it real. Thanks. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you guys so much. I just I I was actually taking photos of some of the pictures and the slides and I guess I could just go back and watch it, but that was fascinating. Can you send us the link to that? Um, bit, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. I'll um I'll put it in an email. Uh -huh. Yeah. Send it to all you guys. And I'll uh, uh, I'll take that email and send it in my follow up when I announce the uh, the uh, the uh, link to the YouTube. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah. It's too much fun. <laughs> For those people that couldn't be with us today, I wonder what happened to Juan Jose. We'll, yeah. we'll figure it out. He, he's real excited about coming to Cincinnati. He's when when does he come? Packing. We think uh, August, right? August. Yeah, I August. Thought, yeah, and there's no response from his mom, so I have no idea. <laughs> okay. okay, well, Columbia is... Uh, uh, a few hours ahead, so uh, it's a it, it's a miracle that we can get them here as often as we have. Yeah. yeah. All right, folks. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. Thanks, I Irene. Oh, my pleasure, John. It was fun. So I'm I'm going to look forward to tips from you and in, in how to deliver this kind of stuff better. We'll, we'll get that later. It's the first time I've done this. So, all right. Yeah. Bye.